You listen to me, Mr. Midlife Crisis. You had your time, but you can't have ours. Oh, Seth Pheasant Rollins with a bar, as the kids say. I don't actually think that's what they say, but I'm 43 years old and very, very, very Caucasian. I don't understand what you kids say. Leave me alone. I'm John Renton with my review, WWE SmackDown from the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. Dallas wrestling has not been this hot since before. David Von Erich was unable to gut it out in Japan. And then Mike Von Erich said, be at that cotton bowl if you want to see me b -b back. And Kerry Von Erich still had two feet and said, if my left foot always better than the right one, I'm cruel. So yeah, enough Von Erich jokes. Let's talk about this show. One thing though, I did miss reviewing last week's show because I was working different shifts. And I did check out the lengthy, lengthy Bloodline segment and a couple other things. My promise to you guys is I will review SmackDown until the SmackDown after WrestleMania, at least weekly. And then after that, it's going to be intermittent because that closing segment had some good stuff after you got the lengthy entrances out of the way. But SmackDown's just gotten to the point where really you get one or two good things and then they just have filler and I still barely know her. So, 20,000 seat capacity, and according to WrestleTix, they had nearly 14,000 people there, and that place was jam-packed. So, The Rock arrives in an old pickup truck, and a stupid little cowboy hat, and extra security. Nick Aldis has extra security for when Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes, called Journal Truth himself, comes to end the bloodline at WrestleMania. I'm going to talk about that and what I feel <clears throat> needs to happen, whether I want it to happen or not, when I get to that segment. Oh boy, they have painted themselves into a goddamn corner. <clears throat> Logan Paul shows up. Apparently, KSI showed up during this segment. I tuned out because, look, Logan Paul is very good on promos. He has taken this like a fish to water. And he has taken to the end ring, and he has done very well. He's still an NFT scam artist. He's a piece of shit for what he did in Japan years ago. And no, it wasn't because he was young. It's because he's a piece of shit. And he's a fucking scumbag of a human being. I don't know who the fuck KSI is. All I know is I never want to see that moron again. Orton showed up and <clears throat> had an RKO on him. Also, WWE and Prime have entered into a sponsorship deal. I have tried four flavors of Prime. That was months ago. They're all shit. It literally tastes like you're just filtering like dirty water. It is not good at all. <clears throat> so, that was kind of nice that Orton did that. <clears throat> and, <laughs> yeah, he poured uh, Prime on, um, on KSI's groin. <clears throat> 100 million subscribers for WWE's YouTube channel. Good for them. Owens and Orton then beat Waller in theory, and it was fine. It was fine for what it was. There was a cool RKO finish, you know, just a toss into the RKO. The match was inconsequential. Theory took the pin, so at least there was that. <clears throat> and then at least I think Theory took the pin. I actually kind of just zoned out during most of the matches. And <clears throat> then Logan attacks both of them, gets the brass knucks, and Orton gets them away from him. And Logan ducks out of the way, and Orton nearly hits Owens. Orton nearly hits an A? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Instead of hey and a who, I went with that. I'm sorry to my Canadian friends. I know you don't all say that. <clears throat> so recaps of Dakota turning on Bailey. Dakota, curse your sudden and obvious betrayal. Could have seen that coming from about 8 million Kiwis away. I don't know what I'm on about. <clears throat> Hala interviews Bailey. All the history, and Bailey cuts a good promo, and you know what? She is going to have to fight against the odds to win. Naomi has glow-in-the-dark earrings. All right? And Bianca is trying to basically set Naomi straight because Naomi has sympathy for Bailey. But um, Bianca says, you weren't here, and yeah, you interacted with her before, but I don't really have any sympathy for her. I think we're going to get um, Bianca turning pretty soon. And we kind of need that, even though she's an inspiration to a lot of little girls. Having her get more of an edge and turn the heel, even for just a refresh, may not be the worst idea. I wanted to see Naomi and Bianca team up, but I wouldn't mind seeing them feud at SummerSlam. So, extra security is still backstage. Lash took on... Or, Lash. Lash, yeah. Lash Legend took on Karrion Cross. Holy shit, that would... Oh, boy. I think Lash Legend actually might be able to out-wrestle Karrion Cross. I think she might be able to beat him at this point. 
Um, <clears throat> Lashley versus Karrion Cross with Scarlet. This feud has done nothing for me. There was a spot before the break where Scarlet got um, her, her back against a pole. And I don't really need to say anything else right there. <laughs> AOP runs in and causes a DQ. The Profits run out and... Then, yeah, okay, this is certainly something. Uh, BFAB then stops Scarlet, and I'm just going to say that a match between them on television might actually cause the universe to implode, because, oh boy, um, <clears throat> I didn't care about this. Why is Ellering there if they're not going to have him do anything like cut promos and be a benefit to the program? LWO Hollywood and LWO Wolfpack recaps. <clears throat> Ray is back after his ankle injury. Electra mocks Dragon Lee, and then LWO, Wolfpack, or Hollywood. I don't know who's who. I don't really care. They <clears throat> schoolyard bully Dragon Lee. Remember when Dragon Lee came in with all the hype in the world and actually seemed like they were going to do something with him? Even if he gets wins, even if he gets a championship run, nothing that they have done with him has stuck. Because they don't know what to fucking do with him. I'm not saying he's going to be the WWE champion. But Jesus. Tiffany makes her entrance. Um... <clears throat> Gets a good reaction. Dallas certainly loves their blondes. Now, in all seriousness, Tiffany actually is somebody that has taken to the main roster very well. Hall of Fame class. Heyman, Bull Nakano. By the way, many people know who Bull Nakano is, despite what some people on the internet try to say. And the U.S. Express. That's good. Rotunda and Wyndham. So, Tiffany Stratton took on Mia Yim. <laughs> and a moonsault a little bit later. One, two, three. They really didn't give us anything else to really focus on. And Tiffany even caught herself and hit that moonsault and hit it flush. That was good. AJ promo on night. He flew around the world or halfway around the world because, you know, AJ probably was just blown away because the earth actually is round, not flat. And then LA Knight was so pissed that he took out the television with a chair. It was a good TV, LA. What the fuck are you doing? Bade is playing WWE 2K24. Pete's like, whoop. And he picks up the controller after Bait leaves. What? <clears throat> Whatever. Dragon Lee he took on Angel Garza. Boy, Dragon Lee is cooled off. He got a roll up for the win <clears throat> and then a beat down afterwards. I guess Carlito and everybody else involved in LWO Wolfpack Hollywood is just done. They took the day off. Damage control <clears throat> um, pre tape. The crux of this is they set Bailey up, and Dakota is a de facto leader, kind of, of damage control, or at least she's the, the mouthpiece for them. That sounded less dirty in my head, and I'm just going to roll with those images. <clears throat> I would love to have a train run on me by damage control. I don't have issues. You have issues. So, Bailey versus Kai next week ought to be pretty good. Roman's entrance, Rock's entrance, with lightning and everything, and it's a good thing that Rock has never done anything on camera and with a big production that involves lightning. Nothing that bombed at the box office. Cody and or Seth have to reference Black Adam in the lead-up because you know that is still sticking in Rock's craw. So the horns down sign, to be fair, um, Texas, uh, the Texas Longhorns, yeah, kind of don't really feel bad they're not succeeding all that well. Not like they used to. Rock is enjoying this. Acknowledge us, Roman says. Cody and Rollins enter through the crowd. We go to break. Cody says he was about to answer the challenge, and Rock cuts him off. Rock <coughs> says the stipulations again. This is why this segment went on a little bit long, and they kind of had to rush the finish, I think. There was a diarrhea chance. That's proving that there's a good reason why Dallas hasn't won a uh, NFL championship in a while. So, this had to be Rush is what I noted because <clears throat> Roman says, you listen to me, Mr. Midlife Crisis. You had your time, but you can't have ours. Roman calls Seth the cross-dresser. Yes, uh, I guess his cousin is rubbing off on him. And then Roman says, when I beat you, it's over. Rock says he's on the TKO board. If you don't win, you can never challenge for this title again. They basically said it without putting it in writing, <laughs> and Rock brought up Cody's siblings and said, you know, you know why there's a 20-year age difference? Because you were a mistake. He slaps Rock. They get upset. Rock's basically like, you know, oh, like Rock even before that is like, let him go. So that was a good ending. I mean, it was a little bit rushed. It kind of reminded me of Nitro and Raw where they left you kind of wanting more. 
Nevertheless, it certainly was a show that had at least something to hook you for next week. Also, we might get a rock concert in Memphis, Tennessee. See, rock can play a guitar and break a guitar and draw a dime. Several dimes. Maybe seven bucks worth of dimes. Good thing Rock has never referenced anything with seven bucks in, ever in his life. So nevertheless, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.